to meet this goal, we've increased the Pell Grant and passed legislation through the House, which we're working to pass through the Senate, to end more than $80 billion in wasteful subsidies to lenders and use that money instead to help students. Beyond the classroom, the Recovery Act that we passed is funding the largest single boost to biomedical research in history. My budget makes the research and experimentation tax credit permanent to help companies afford the often high cost of innovation. I've proposed eliminating the capital gains tax for investments in startups and small companies because countless big ideas begin in small businesses. And we are doubling our capacity in renewable energy, even as we seek to create a system of incentives to make clean energy the profitable kind of energy in America. For at our best, this nation has never feared the future. We've shaped the future. Even when we've endured terrible storms, we haven't given up or turned back. We've remained fixed on that brighter horizon. And that's how we've led in the pursuit of scientific discovery. And in turn, that's how science has helped us lead the world. And there's no better illustration than what took place at the close of World War II, when the United States transported dozens of captured V-2 rockets from Germany to New Mexico. These were among the most sophisticated weapons in the world, a reminder that much of World War II was fought far from the battlefield by Alan Turing and Bletchy Park and Oppenheimer at Los Alamos, and by countless others who developed radar and aircraft and antibiotics. The military wanted to understand this new missile technology that the V-2 represented. But scientists were also invited to use these tests to take measurements of the atmosphere. And then one engineer had an idea to rig a camera and attach it to one of the rockets. And so in this brief moment between the end of a world war and the start of a cold war, a group of scientists erupted with joy as they discovered that they had captured the very first photos of our world as seen from space. And their work would continue as the rocket and satellite research panel. And after the launch of Sputnik in 1957, the work of this panel would be assumed by a new agency called NASA. The research into these weapons of war would lead to the missions of Mercury and Gemini and Apollo. That's the incredible promise of the work scientists do every day, like the scientists, research and engineers and innovators we honor with these medals. The S scientific progress offers us a chance to achieve prosperity and defend our nation. It has offered us benefits that have improved our lives and our health, improvements that we often take for granted. But it also gives us something more. At root, science forces us to reckon with the truth as best as we can ascertain it, and to reckon with the power that comes from this knowledge, for good and for ill. With each new discovery brings new responsibility to move past our differences and to address our shared problems, to embrace a sense of wonder and our common humanity. Now, Carl Sagan, who helped broaden the reach of science to millions of people, once described his enthusiasm for discovery in very simple terms. He said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. <laughs> Thank you all for the incredible discoveries that you have made, the progress you've invented, and the benefits you've bestowed on the American people and the world. So it is now my honor to ask the recipients to come forward to receive their medals. And uh, as their citations are read, I will You'll just have to bend down a little bit. And, uh, we, we, will, uh, we will bestow on you the highest honor that our nation can give you for your science, technology, and innovation. So uh, do we have someone here for the uh, citations? Dr. Bernie Alder. <laughs> 2008 National Medal of Science to Dr. Bernie Alder, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory for establishing powerful computer methods useful for mo molecular dynamic simulations, conceiving and ex executing experimental shockwave simulations
to obtain properties of fluids and solids at very high pressures, and developing Monte Carlo methods for calculating the properties of matter from first principles, all of which contributed to major achievements in the science of condensed matter. Dr. Francis S. Collins. <laughs> 2008 National Medal of Science to Dr. Francis S. Collins, National Institutes of Health, for his visionary contributions to the fields of genetics and genomics through the work of his own laboratory and his leadership of multiple international genomics initiatives including the Human Genome Project. <laughs> Dr. Joanna S. Fowler. Two thousand eight National Medal of Science to Dr. Joanna S. Fowler, Brookhaven National Laboratory, for her pioneering work in chemistry involving the synthesis of medical imaging compounds and her innovative applications of these compounds to human neuroscience, which have significantly advanced our understanding of the human brain and brain diseases, including drug addiction. Dr. Elaine Fuchs. <laughs> 2008 National Medal of Science to Dr. Elaine Fuchs, the Rockefeller University, for her pioneering use of cell biology and molecular genetics in mice to understand the basis of inherited diseases in humans and her outstanding contributions to our understandings of the biology of skin and its disorders, including her notable investigations of adult skin stem cells, <laughs> cancers, and genetic syndromes. <laughs> Dr. James E. Gunn. Two thousand and eight National Medal of Science to Dr. James E. Gunn, Princeton University, for his brilliant design of many of the most influential telescopes and instruments in astronomy, and in particular for the crucial role those technological marvels played in the creation of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which has cataloged two hundred million stars, galaxies, and quasars, discovered the most distant known quasars and probed the epoch of formation of the first stars and galaxies. <laughs> 